This is the Matt Beck Podcast. Today's episode is powered by MinervaBeauty.com. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about an important subject, but I also wanted to say that this episode is brought to you by MinervaBeauty.com. They're my good friends. They get the best prices on salon furniture, so if you're looking for an upgrade, go to MinervaBeauty.com. Okay, so today... Um, we talk about an important subject that I think is a question in a lot of salon owner minds, managers, um, also stylists might be struggling with this. So I think it's a good all around question. It came from Instagram last night. So I made a post on Instagram, um, and I basically did, it was a one minute video and that video was focused on a square haircut, basic square, one length, um, kind of a long bob, I guess you could say. And if you want to go onto my Instagram, you can check it out. It's at Free Salon Education on Instagram. Um, so I made the post, and um, basically I said that discipline equals precision. And what I was saying on that post is that there's so much more to haircutting. There's so much discipline that goes into it when you want to have a precise cut. And you can see in that one minute video when it's sped up, you can see that pretty much every section that I take. Um, the partings are the same. The the amount of hair that I take each time is the same. And it's kind of cool when you see it sped up because that to me, like when I watch it back, I think I don't really think about those things like when I'm cutting hair. But when you see it sped up, it, it kind of can like like blow your mind a little bit that um, without thinking you're taking the certain size sections and you're staying consistent. And it's really just um, years and years of practicing that and and. I think I'm thinking in my mind every time I cut hair that I'm not doing it the way that I really want to. Like I'm, I'm always struggling and I'm wanting to be better at haircutting. So that's uh, the first thing. So I make this post, I say uh, discipline equals precision. I'm talking about combing and partings and all of that. That's what I mean by it. And um, a, a salon owner, I believe, uh, makes a post saying, I totally agree. And I'm not going to say their name. You can go on Instagram, you can see their name, but um I don't want to say it out here just in case, but um, they say, I totally agree with the precision. Um, I am an A-type person, but I have a few stylists who are not too A-type. Um, never thought I would say this. Uh, they take way too long, and I think it's a confidence thing. Any tips for them or just get your confidence up and it comes with time? So basically the question is, uh, should, they, should people take that much time cutting hair? And my thought is, and it goes it goes uh, in a lot of different directions, but those of you guys out there watching this, just know that um, I take a lot more time on my haircuts, but I also charge for it. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge. And when you look at, you know, more chain hair places, they, they look at speed. They want you to work faster. Their haircuts are cheaper. The experience is different. Um, you know... A lot of things that you do in business, um, you go to different businesses, you go to fast food, you get a certain quality of food um, because they make it super fast for you, but it's convenient, right? Um, or you go to a fine restaurant, you spend two, three hours in there uh, really enjoying the food. There's so much art that goes into it. <laughs> of course, I'm going to food right now. It's, uh, it's the evening time. But um, when you think about food, um, it's very similar to, to what happened or a restaurant. It's what happens in the hair salon as well. So um, I don't think people have that expectation when you go into a chain place that you're going to get the most amazing haircut. I think they're going there for convenience. They understand that. I don't personally believe that because I look at haircutting differently, like I, I like studying haircutting. I like really understanding it, but I think that there's different types of people. Just like you're saying there's type A, you're a type A person, whatever. Um, I think there's different types of people that really like to spend that amount of time on a haircut. Now, if they're new into the business, Yes, it just takes time. I mean, you can't expect somebody, you got to train uh, and you can't expect somebody to do a haircut super fast. But um, in my, in any of our business models, me and Christina, we've never sat there and said, you know, we've had people that take a while to get things done and we've had conversations with them, like what can make it faster. But also if they're giving great service and the customers are loving it, then I think it's an opportunity to look at should you raise the prices of that stylist um, if they've been doing hair for a while, but they really want to focus that much on their work, it's worth a little bit extra. So um, that's kind of like a broad look at that question. 
or a broad answer for that question. But um, initially, my thought is, are they just coming out of school? If they're just coming out of school, yes, it takes time. I would start uh, working with them, train with them, um, figure out the little things that uh, make them slower. Uh, Think about it like sports, basically. So um, anytime somebody like, let's take football, for instance, if you've got a football team and you have a running back who's not um, running to the hole the right way or fast enough, then what are you going to do? Are you just going to uh, make him quit or are you going to break down his technique and figure out what things are taking a long time? Most of the time, people take a long time because they're talking. Um, they get nervous. Uh, a lot of stylists, because our our job is way more than just cutting hair, it is having a conversation. And some people become hairdressers because they're thinking it's an artistic thing, which it is, but it's also a very... Uh, You have to be outgoing. You have to talk to people. So there's a lot more to the job than just cutting hair. So when you get put in front of a customer and you have to have a conversation with them, sometimes people just start rambling. They just start talking about all kinds of stuff and it, you know, gets in the way of the work. I've also noticed that people that uh, take a long time, they don't talk and work at the same time. So they'll take a second and they tell a story and then they start working. I, um, in the salon, have always you know, kind of had my conversation while multitasking and, you know, either going through their hair, really assessing it, being able to listen to what they're asking or talking about, but also, you know, going through their hair and figuring out what my plan is as well, because I've always worked on a very strict, you know, color and cut is an hour and a half to two hours max. Um, and then if it's more than that, I will work them on a couple different visits. Uh, but I always try to keep my timing there because I think if you have sporadic timing with different services, uh, what happens is you can get too bunched up and it's too hard to, you know, keep a steady uh, clientele. You got to spread your book out too much and you won't make as much money. So that would be my thing. Talk and work at the same time and see if that's one of the issues. If the issue is they just don't comb hair fast and they don't part hair fast and they don't section the hair fast. Um, if that's the issue that comes with time, especially if they're, um, a new stylist. So I wouldn't get on them about that. That's why their prices are probably, you know, their prices are less, but they'll learn as they go and you can raise their prices up a little bit. But, um, but it's just the reality, you know, you can't push people to be faster. Some people just work slower than others, but you got to price it accordingly. Um, I know some of you guys in your mind, because I'm thinking the same thing. Um, well, if I have somebody that's slow and they're new, I can't overprice them. Right. So, um, I wouldn't worry about making money off of new people right away. That's an investment into the future of that person. Um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't need to make another analogy, but like I was going to go right back to football. So you draft somebody into the NFL Uh, I guess it's football season, so we'll talk about it. But um, you draft somebody in the NFL. You don't pay them a whole lot, um, but you're focused on their future and you assess it a few years later, a few years down the road and really figure out, you know, is this somebody that's going to be with us for a long time? Should we give them the big contract or uh, do we move on to somebody else? So you got to think about it when they're out of school, give them a couple years to really grow and and form. Make sure you have that training in place for them so that they can grow And then I think you will be uh, much better off. Like I was saying, I guess an easier ending to this is if you have a stylist that's been with you for a very long time, they're too slow for you and it doesn't work in your business model, then you might have to move on to to a different stylist because chair time is very valuable. Um, So if it doesn't fit your business model, then it doesn't. But personally, I think if somebody has been doing hair for a while, they take a little bit longer but you can charge enough that makes sense, then that would be the way that I would go because you're going to get better quality hair. Um, That client's getting more attention paid to them. Uh, So the relationship is better. And in the the end result, um, your business is better. So that is my thing. Um, Hope you guys liked the podcast. I'd love to hear your feedback. So if you go to fscpn.com, you can leave me a voice message. Um, Love to hear that. I can add it to other podcasts later on. Also, if you have any questions on there, you can leave those as well. And then on YouTube, if you guys are watching this podcast, 
Let me know what you think. Um, I'd like to start doing this a couple times a week. Uh, I definitely consistently have been putting out audio podcasts, but I don't usually do the video portion. So if you enjoyed being able to watch the podcast, let me know that in the comments below. Um, I think that's it. So, oh, also next week, um, we have a live class coming up with Heather Kanoy from Paul Mitchell. Um, our Splitting Hairs podcast will be back as well uh, next week on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the whole team will be here. And um, and then Hair Like a Boss is coming in to the studio the week after that. So we have that coming up as well. So, so many really cool things uh, going on. So don't want you guys to think Splitting Hairs is going anywhere. It's just we pick and choose uh, the best. We're trying to get guests and different things in to keep it interesting for you guys. So keep the questions coming. Keep the support coming. Really appreciate it. Uh, you guys being a part of um, these podcasts and just, you know, watching and and, uh, sharing your thoughts. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks.